Hi there, and welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Keith. Today, we're talking about electric motor bearings. What's their purpose? How many types are there? How to tell when they failed? And everything you need to know about replacing the bearings in your electric motor. All right, let's jump in. So, why do electric motors need bearings? Bearings reduce internal friction so the motor can complete its basic functions more efficiently. They do this by supporting the shaft as it spins to move the load. Bearings absorb radial forces and allow tight connections between components while spinning at high speeds, which helps reduce vibration and heat buildup. Because the bearings play such an important role, make sure you get the right bearings for your application. There are five types of bearings. Rolling element bearings have balls or rollers that allow motors to run at high speeds with minimal power losses. Often found in heavy duty rotating equipment with high radial demand. Sealed or shielded bearings have additional protections for contaminated or wet environments. These are common in washdown environments like food manufacturing plants. Sealed bearings keep contaminants out and retain the lubrication. Sleeve bearings are a simple design with a single rotating cylinder instead of rolling elements and function as a sliding action. Sleeve bearings are not very common, but you can find them in light load applications like bathroom fans. Vertical motors, which are typically used on pumps when space is a premium, have angular contact bearings. These bearings can handle the radial load and axial thrust associated with the pump. And lastly, insulated bearings are designed to protect the motor from the electrical damage that VFDs can cause. If using a VFD, you'll significantly extend the life of your motor if using insulated bearings. These five bearing types have different radial and axial load bearing abilities and different levels of heat dissipation. Each bearing type is designed for specific applications to help extend the life of your electric motor. Electric motor bearings experience a lot of stress. And yet, despite the hard work and stress they endure, properly maintained bearings should last many years. So why are bearings the number one reason electric motors fail? There are a few reasons bearings can fail prematurely. When a bearing doesn't have the speed rating to match the motor, or you're running the motor above its max speed rating, the friction will become too much to handle, leading to overheating and vibration that'll damage the bearing and even the motor. In standard applications, the bearing will be rated much higher than the motor is capable of running. But in situations where the motor is running at five to 10,000 RPMs, a special bearing is needed. If you're unsure, you can check with your bearing manufacturer and the motor manufacturer to make sure you get the right bearing for your application. Bearings require regular maintenance particularly when it comes to internal lubrication. The lubrication or grease must be the correct grade for the job. Check with the bearing manufacturer to ensure you are using the correct grade. Your bearing lubrication must be stored correctly to avoid contamination. Moisture, dust, chemicals, and high or low temperatures can contaminate the lubrication before you even put it to use. Contaminated lubrication will cause pitting and corrosion in the bearing, increasing friction that leads to failure. Plus, over or under lubricating your bearings could also lead to damage. Too little lubrication increases friction and reduces the ability to dissipate heat, while too much lubrication can break seals and increase the chances of contamination. Your maintenance team should follow a regular greasing schedule based on the manufacturer's recommendations to ensure your bearings last a long, long time. The intervals between greasing will be specific to the motor load, runtime, and ambient temperature. Check out our video on motor lubrication for more specifics. Incorrect insulation or removal of bearings can lead to premature failure. A bearing that's been installed with improper alignment can fail on startup or very quickly down the road. And removing a bearing incorrectly can cause damage to the motor shaft or the bearing housing. Damage to the shaft can damage the new bearing during installation. And lastly, bearings must be stored in clean, dry, vibration-free locations. Bearings are quite fragile outside their intended use. You must take great care to not damage your bearing before it's even installed. There are a few ways things can go wrong quickly when it comes to electric motor bearings. So, how do you tell when a bearing has failed? When a bearing is failing or about to fail, there'll be increased noise, vibration, and or excess heat during motor operation. Bearings can be monitored and tested using sound analysis and vibration monitoring methods. These are in the form of electrical equipment that can listen to and feel the bearing while the motor is running. It's pretty uncommon for the average maintenance person to have the equipment, but do see the sound analysis and vibration in the bigger plants. You can also manually turn the motor's shaft, feeling how smoothly it moves. 
Any resistance or scraping noise indicates that the bearing is failing. Now that we know our bearing has failed, it's time to find a replacement. Looking at our old bearing, we can find a part number on the surface. When we type this number into the smart search bar at emotorsdirect.ca, we can see our replacement options, their cost, and where they're located in Canada. If your bearing is old and covered in corrosion, you may not be able to locate the part number. So instead, we'll take a look at our nameplate on our motor. Labeled as DE for the drive end and NDE for the non-drive end, we see the part number for the bearing. We can put this number into the smart search feature at emotorsdirect.ca, just the same as the number directly from the bearing. If all else fails, contact our technical experts. Based in Edmonton, Alberta, they're available over the phone or email Monday to Friday to assist you with your electric motor projects. Once your new bearing arrives, it's time to replace the old one. Here's your step-by-step -step process for replacing your electric motor bearings. Step one, set aside plenty of time to complete the job. Replacing a bearing can take as little as two hours on smaller motors and as much as 10 hours on larger, heavier motors. Replacing bearings can be a tough task. Rushing can increase your chances of damaging the bearing or your motor. Step two, prepare your workspace ensuring that it is clean and dry. You can even wear sterile gloves to make sure that you don't damage or contaminate the bearing. You don't want to get any sand or dirt on the bearing or it could cause the bearings to slow down or seize up altogether. Step three, disconnect power to the motor and disassemble by removing end covers and the rotor assembly. Step four, remove the old bearing using a bearing puller. This tool helps to distribute force evenly and reduce the risk of damaging the motor shaft. Surface rust will work to hold the bearing firmly in place, so patience is key. Never use power tools to cut the bearing off as you risk damaging the motor shaft or bearing housing. Step five, inspect the old bearing for the cause of failure. Is there corrosion? Is the lubrication healthy or contaminated? When you know why the old bearing failed, you can make efforts to maintain the new bearing so it lasts a long time. Sometimes you may not be able to see the cause of failure during a visual inspection. This is fine and the bearing does still need to be replaced as even a small failure can lead to big consequences. Step six, clean the motor shaft, housings, holders, and keyways and remove any gouges or burrs on the motor shaft with a file or buffer. The new bearing must be installed on a clean, smooth, corrosion-free and contaminant-free surface to avoid damaging it before the motor even starts. Step seven, inspect the new bearing for any obvious signs of damage from manufacturing, shipping and storage and ensure that it has adequate lubrication. Step eight, heat the new bearing with a bearing induction heater. Bearings are designed to fit exactly into place with tolerances only in the 10 thousandths of an inch, meaning it can be very difficult to get it onto the shaft of the motor. Step nine, use a bearing installation kit with a dead blow hammer and an impact sleeve to install the new bearing into the motor. You can also use an arbor press, but alignment is essential. A misaligned bearing will likely fail on motor startup. Step 10, finally, reassemble the motor and test it under zero load, feeling for vibration and listening for any unexpected noise. There you have it. You've replaced your electric motor bearing. Bearings are one of the most critical electric motor components to select install and maintain correctly to keep your motor running efficiently and effectively. If you have anything to add, have any questions or have a suggestion for another topic for us to cover, leave us a comment below. Make sure you like this video and hit subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Next time we'll cover how to set up your L510 Tico Westinghouse VFD. I'm Keith with eMotors Direct, your source for industrial motors, gear reducers, controllers and accessories across Canada. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.